If we made a graph of power and time, where power is on the left and time is at the bottom, and then we asked you to do a bunch of different tests where we said, write as long as you can, as hard as you can, write as long as you can, as hard as you can, write as long as you can, as hard as you can, and so on, what you get is a bunch of points that look like this. So you can see from the short periods of time, you can go way harder than you can for the long periods of time. So what we can do is draw a line through all of them. Now, the interesting thing here is when you draw the line, it looks like it levels out somewhere. But the important thing is that that's critical power or threshold power. And while it's been shown that critical power occurs close to the maximal lactate steady state, in most cases, critical power should not be used as a direct replacement for FTP, which admittedly limits the direct application given almost all commercially available training platforms use FTP as their central power-based value to calculate intensity factor, training stress, etc. But critical power is the level you feel when you say, okay, I can do this for a little while, but if I go any harder, I'm going to blow up right away. In practice, people can typically only sustain power outputs at critical power for around 30 minutes. So the other interesting thing, if we do look at the same graph as critical power, is that if we draw a little box, so if we make a box that connects the one axis over to these points and down to critical power line, that area is called W prime. It's a measure of energy measured in kilojoules. And as you can see, you can draw boxes around any of these points. And the interesting thing is that they're always the same size. Sometimes they're tall and skinny, sometimes they're long and skinny, but no matter what, there's the same amount of energy in each of these boxes. Now, what that means is that once you get above your critical power, you have a very limited amount of energy that you can expend. And you can expend it really quickly by going really hard, or you can expend it over a longer period of time by going easier. But either way, you've only got the same amount. And if you use it all up, you're going to blow up or have to slow down. And one of the things that you can think of this is like a battery. At the start of your workout, you've got 100%. And if you do intervals until you explode, you'll end up with 0% left in your battery. And that's obviously something you want to avoid, especially if you're in a race. When we measure W prime, we can compare it to some typical levels for endurance athletes. For example, this level is around 9 to 15 kilojoules for men and around 6 to 10 kilojoules for women. Although these values can be bigger for athletes with a very high VO2 max, for punchy endurance disciplines, slightly higher W prime are better suited, such as between 15 to 18 kilojoules for men or 11 to 13 for women. At the other end of the spectrum, sprinters can have W prime values in excess of 25 to 30 kilojoules. If you read the information that was supplied with the test file, you would get an understanding of the types of tests needed to get critical power and W prime. But to roughly go over this, you need three or four maximal efforts, anywhere between two minutes and 20 minutes. And there definitely are some best practices around how this session or two sessions should be run.